All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, you know, there's uh, been a lot of talk, believe it or not, in the wake of the, uh, the, the primaries and the, uh, the wake of the runoff uh, the other day uh, about voters' rights and voters' uh, uh, registration laws and all that, and there's, that's been going on for quite some time, but every time there's a, a, a group of elections, that's discussed, especially in the runoff where uh, African American vote played a, a part, a big part, and Democrat votes played a big part in determining the outcome of that uh, election. Now, even though it was a Republican uh, uh, runoff, um, I, I want you to hear Jody Reed of, uh, of uh, MSNBC uh, talking about the vote, you know, voting uh, rights and the Voting Rights Act and how these, these laws, uh, voter ID laws, are, well, watch. And while the civil rights movement fought to help black Southern voters gain access to a political system dominated by the Democratic Party, now that white Southerners have all but abandoned the party and become Republicans, and Republicans absolutely control the South, what does that mean for those who seek to limit minority voter influence in today's elections? And, and Cheryl, I think what's counterintuitive for a lot of people when they look at what's happening in the South is that the South is solidly Republican territory. So people ask themselves, well, why would anybody want to bother to restrict African-American voters? Well, the Mississippi case that we just saw, because it is an open primary state, kind of illustrates maybe one reason why. Can you sort of talk to that counterintuitive notion that people maybe don't understand why a Southern state would care to restrict black voters and brown voters at all? Nobody, I shouldn't say nobody, the purpose of the voter ID laws is not about restricting black voters and brown voters. My goodness, again, this is another case of the mainstream media and this administration and Democrats trying to make you believe that if you don't agree with them, then you're, you must be racist or there's something wrong with you. You know, sky is green, grass is blue. If you don't see it, then you're, you're something wrong with you. Uh, let me just talk to you about polls here. Uh, seven in 10 registered voters are in favor of ID laws in order to root out fraud at the ballot box. 70%. And you want to hear how it breaks down? I'll tell you how it breaks down. 55% of Democrats support the laws, 43% oppose them. Over 50% of Democrats support voter ID laws. That's how out of touch Jody Reid, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, NBC, the president, the majority leader, the, the minority leader in the House, all of them are on this issue. They would have you believe that it's racist. It's about stopping blacks from voting. Really? It's about stopping fraud, for crying out loud. Uh, what is it? How many? 91% uh, of Republicans support it. 66% of independents support it. And 55% of Democrats support it. Uh, this is a Fox News poll um, released uh, in May. In May. All right, folks. We're coming back with Kendall Coffee. We're going to go spinning the law. But first, John C. Crandall. John C. Crandall, the good doctor. I, know, I love these segments uh, because you know how concerned I am about my health. Uh, so he'll be here to talk about something everybody needs to be concerned about and interested in, cholesterol and food. If you have high cholesterol, you probably think that taking a statin drug is the best way to lower it. After all, why wouldn't you? Statins are among the most prescribed drugs in the world. But although they are great medications to those who truly need them, other people can lower their cholesterol just by adding certain foods to their diet. Here are the three cholesterol-lowering foods that you'll find at your supermarket. Number one is oatmeal. Oatmeal is a potent cholesterol-lowering food because oats are a soluble fiber. This means that they absorb the excess cholesterol in your digestive system and carry it out of your body. In addition, oatmeal also helps prevent diabetes and cancer as well. In fact, research shows that eating oatmeal on a regular basis can be as effective as taking a statin. Second, chew salmon over beef and you'll be replacing a food packed with cholesterol-raising saturated fat with one rich in monounsaturated fat. This is the type of good fat that makes salmon taste fattening, but it's not. Salmon is also packed with omega-3 fatty acids, which lower triglycerides, another dangerous blood fat. Third, if it's 
mid-afternoon and you're craving a snack, grab a handful of almonds. Eating almonds every day lowers your bad LDL cholesterol by about 9%. Almonds are also packed with other vitamins as well, but the best thing about almonds is that they don't taste like a health food. Almonds contain no cholesterol and are also packed with healthy, monounsaturated oils. Since most of you are already reading my book, The Simple Heart Cure, I want you to go to chapter 11, in which I tell you about foods that can help you lower your cholesterol. I'm Dr. Chauncey Crandall, and thanks for watching this Health Minute. I'll see you next time. Get your copy of Dr. Crandall's best-selling book, The Simple Heart Cure, for just $4.95 with this special offer. Go to www.simpleheartbook.com to get your copy today. That's